What we're going to discuss in this tutorial is how we use some of the tools that are available to us within our editable polygon object. So you'll notice that um, even though we have the selection tools here, I've also got this edit geometry and this is really where we're going to be looking now. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing some of those by basing our discussion upon the object that we've got in front of us here. So really what I would like to do is first of all start by saying let's make a box. So I'll start with a very simple box like this one. And that box in itself has got a few options in there, length, width, height. And I'm going to right click on that and convert it to be uh, an editable polygon. So let me, there we go. And from here, this is where I can start editing. Now, it's all very well being able to select edges and vertices and what have you, but we really need to be able to do something with them. So one of the tools that I used to create these ramparts up here was the inset tool. Now the inset tool is accessed by selecting a polygon. There you go. Let's make that more obvious. Polygon face here. And then either by clicking on, on it or clicking on its settings dialog. If I was to click just on the inset tool itself, you'll notice that the cursor, when I mouse over that red face, changes um, to sort of be something different. So that when it's not, when it is. What I can do now is I can left click. Now that cursor icon is now telling me that I could use the inset tool. And it's kind of a, a, a small box inside of a bigger box with some arrows pointing out. You need to sort of get in close and look at that, but it is there. So if I now left click and drag, I can interactively change what size that inset is. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating a completely new face that's inside the original one. My other way of doing that, if I just undo, is to press the settings dialog. And this is where we have this new set of tools arrived. This is new for 2011. It's a new way of working with the tools settings. And it's really just a very simple, very lightweight kind of um, set of tools that appear. There's no dialog box around them. It's just the dialogues themselves. And you can see here that what I've got is I've got uh, an option to do by group or by polygon, which we'll talk about in a moment. And I've also got a settings dialog. So this is the amount. So by left clicking and dragging, I can pick a particular inset amount. Now the advantage that I have doing it this way over just pressing inset is for a start, I can be very accurate about what I want. So I could say that this is going to inset by five units. Okay. But I can also rotate around that and I can look at my model and I can make the decision. Was that the right thing to do? If it's not the right thing to do, I can make a change very very simple very very easy then I'll click OK and there we have my first inset if I wanted to do that on multiple objects say for example uh, I've got these objects all the way around here on these two sets of corners and I want to inset those I can always inset either by a group or by individual polygons so you can see here this is the individual polygons that have all inset which is all well and good or I could do that by group and then click OK. So that gives you kind of an idea of what we can do with this and, and where we can go. Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude and that's going to be using a very, very similar idea. I can either extrude, which will base itself on whatever we've got in the settings dialog, mouse over my red, red selected polygons here, left click and drag them out. And I've no idea how that did it or why, why it did it that way at all. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go to my settings dialog. And you can see here that that's kind of inset in a couple of different ways uh, by group. Now, if I left click that, I've got by local normal or by polygon. I don't want by polygon. I would like by local normal, though. And ah, I can see that that's given me a slightly more interesting inset there. So I'm quite liking that. I think I'll go for that. I'll press OK. Be careful you don't press the plus button, which is apply and continue. The hint there, if I move this out of the way, uh, move it just over here so we can see better. The hint there where it says apply and continue, if I press that again, we inset once more and again and again and again, and it becomes very strange. So I'll keep pressing Control Z until I get back to where I wanted, and then I'll press the tick, which is the OK. Once I've done that, I can always select these edges again, go for another insert click OK, go for another 
extrude there and I can either come in or I could choose to go out. In actual fact, I quite like that idea of coming in. So I'll left click that spinner and pull it back. Come a little bit further, have a look around that. I think that's okay, so I'll okay it. At the top here, what I might do is I might grab hold of these faces just here and I'll put another extrude onto them, except for I'll make this more positive this time. And what I'm going to do with the top here is I'm going to use something called a bevel. So this is the bevel here, and again I can use it interactively, or as I would suggest that you do, I'm going to use it with my settings. And at first, this looks very much like an extrude, because it comes straight up. But what I've got here is this extra option, which is the outline. And with the outline, I can actually scale that top face in. And of course remember that because I chose settings rather than just interactive, I've got this option to look around as much as I want and think, is this what I want? Is that the option, the result I want? If not, I can just reduce this down maybe a little bit more. There we go. I like that, so I'll OK it. So now we're starting to get this really rather quite interesting shape appear here, which I quite like. Now, I also would like to use some of my other tools that I've got here, so let's go ahead and use those, shall we? Let's start off by mirroring this object, and I'll just click OK to that, and then I'll just move it. I'll explain what I did later on there, but what I needed to do is to have two objects, and the reason why I needed that is because I needed them attached. Now these needed to be attached so that I could select one of the elements, or one of the sets of polygons, so say two polygons over here, two polygons here, and I'm going to link them together. And I'm going to link them together using the bridge tool. So there we go, there's my bridge settings. And you can see at the moment they're only linked with one segment. If I choose lots of segments, let's press F2 there, we can have a little bit of fun by either, and that should have, let's see here, that's not doing what it should do. That's interesting. The bulge is working. And the position, ah yes, let me see. Let's move the bulge there, and let's move the bias of that bulge more towards the middle. In fact, let's just give that a value of zero. I can actually bulge or sort of shrink in to give me a slightly more sort of unreal view. Or I've got my smoothing groups here, or I can twist, so I can twist this round. So you can create these very interesting sort of different types of architecture. As you see there, that could be a walkway, it could be all sorts of things. I think possibly what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that back to zero. Turn that background there. There we go, and just leave it as it is. Close that down. So that's connected my two sides of the building together. And again, I could select uh, another polygon and I could extrude that out. And there you go, you see you're starting to see the beginnings of a building appear there. It's all looking quite good, quite modern, quite funky. But what happens if I wanted to add some extra detail in here? Well, what I can do is I can select my edge and do a ring selection. And I've got one other thing that I want to show you here, and that's the connect tool. And the connect tool connects all of those edges with a single cut line. If I make that two segments, I get two segments. I can pinch these together and I can slide them around as well. So I can get this very interesting idea going on that I can have this kind of offset of a piece of detail just here. So I'll click OK to that. And I'll take my face that I've got here, or indeed I might take just my two edges here and I might connect these again ostensibly by one, and I'll set my pinch back to zero, but I'll change my slide value so that's closer to the top. And again, I can do the same with these two edges. There we go. And now, if I select this one polygon face just there, I could extrude that either out, let's make a little bit of an entrance, 
or I could bring it in to show that that's where a doorway is going to be. Very, very useful tool, very clean, very efficient way of modeling, very efficient way of working. So we've covered actually in the 10 minutes that we've been doing this, rather a lot of tools, haven't we? We've covered uh, extrude, we've covered bridge, we haven't covered chamfer or cap, but we'll get through to using those a little bit later on. Uh, really good, really useful tools, just starting you off on your ability to make models with 3D Studio Max.